Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about test analysis and design and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 4.3 white box test techniques and as a part of this tutorial today which is a pretty short tutorial we'll be talking about what is the value of white box test techniques. As a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be trying to understand how white box testing techniques can contribute to the major success of the overall project testing. However, most of us get under that impression and illusion that white box test techniques are only limited to unit testing or to the development part, which is of course unit testing altogether. But when it comes to the non-technical tests or non-functional testing, we certainly have a lot of level like performance, security, and many other API tests which are being conducted, we certainly look forward to have a lot of white box testing being conducted. Indeed, not only that, if we jump onto multiple other things like interoperability, the portability, recoverability, and so on, we will have a lot of scope of white box test techniques to be applied. Indeed, there are many other techniques, but at this point, we just want to keep it as a context because uh, this is more at the black box level of testing certification. So we will just give you a quick outset of what exactly white box testing value can be, which can be added further to the overall industry practices. So to talk about this, of course, we are talking about the value of white box testing. And the very first point to talk here is to talk about, uh, it is one of the fundamental strength of the white box test technique is that the entire software implementation is taken into account during testing which facilitates the defect detection even when the software specification is vague, outdated, or incomplete. The most important benefit of having white box testing techniques in place is that when your requirements are not clear or incomplete or not so detailed that the black box test techniques can be applied, then white box testing can really help us to do the required test cases execution. At the same time, these are generally applicable when the requirements are not up to the mark. However, on the, at the same time, we cannot ignore the weaknesses of this particular category. And we say that a corresponding weakness is that if the software does not implement one or more requirements, white box testing may not detect the resulting defects of omissions. So it's more of like if the functional functionalities are not yet implemented, then it might be very difficult to find a particular defect related to that. So in a nutshell, all it means that white box test techniques are dependent on code. So given that you have a programming knowledge, you have some fundamental understanding of what is code, you can go ahead and apply these techniques. And this will be very useful when the requirements are not detailed. But at the same time, if requirements are not detailed and the implementation has not yet taken place or some of the functionalities are yet to be implemented, then white box testing techniques can be a limitation. Further to add here, of course, white box test techniques can be used in static testing, which we have covered in entire chapter three. And here, which is approach, uh, which is used as a part of the approaches like write-ons of the code. And they, they are well suited to reviewing the code that is not yet ready for execution, as well as pseudocodes and other high level or top down logic, which can be modeled with a control flow graph. So however, we got an insight already with help of our techniques that it does need a pictorial representation of what we have been doing in order to derive the number of test cases. So it will certainly make use of this and static testing is more about statically reviewing the work products. So the work product can be a code, can be a algorithm, can be a flow chart. So it would be very useful to derive minimum number of test cases to do these executions or perform the static testing of the code itself. Also to add here, performing only black box testing does not provide a measure of actual code coverage, which means the black box testing would be just limited from the behavior point of view, but not the structural point of view. So however, we need to do a top up of or blend off the black box and white box together so that we can have the best coverage possible on a given functionality from the behavior as well as from the technical side of it. Also to add, White box coverage measures provide an objective measurement of coverage and provide the necessary information to allow additional tests to be generated to increase this coverage and subsequently increase confidence in the code. 
So black box testing is more concept driven. So if you see there are conditions and we limit in such a way that we cannot be very, very precise that what percentage of coverage we have achieved. However, for example, equivalence partition, we can take one test per partition, but we do understand at an outset that something is still not giving us that level of confidence. But when it comes to white box, it's very precise, very accurate in terms of covering the statements and decisions. So we can be very much confident compared to that of the black box. However, this is not to discriminate that white box testing is more important than black box testing. It is just to let people know that white box can equally add a lot of value when it comes to testing a system. So keeping it short and to the point, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.